Hi, and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be working with word equations that involve multiplication and division. And this, of course, is only to be expected because we've been working with how to solve equations using multiplication and division properties anyway. So when we talk about multiplication, multiplication is a condensed way to indicate repeated addition. But this isn't just any old set of additions that's happening. This is repeated addition of the same amount. So when you write 2 times 6 is equal to 12, what we're really saying is that 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus another 2 plus another 2 is equal to 12. And people just got tired of writing all of the plus twos down. So really what we've done is we've added two six times. This is probably how the multiplication symbol came to be called times, because right? it happened six times. At any rate, that's what our multiplication means. So let's see where we might be using this. As we slide down to our first example, we are talking about perimeter. And you'll remember that perimeter is the distance all the way around a figure. And when our figure has straight sides, it's the sum of the side lengths. So let's write that down. So the first thing we'd like to do is notice that we have some repeated addition. The sides of the square are measuring 16 inches, so we'll label our figure. And if we had to calculate this, we would say that the perimeter is equal to 16 plus 16 plus 16 and plus another 16, like we did earlier when we were talking about perimeter. But this time all the sides have the same length, so we could, of course, express this with multiplication. <clears throat> this is 4 times 16. And so of course we multiply 4 by 16 and find out that the perimeter is equal to 64 and of course those are inches. So squares are sort of special in that way because their perimeter can be found by multiplying one of the side lengths by 4. So if we come down to our next example, we have a technician who's going to make a square duct by folding the long side of a rectangular piece of sheet metal. We should probably make a picture of this. So the long side here is supposed to measure 60 inches. And so we're going to fold it once here. That's going to become our left-hand side. We'll make a crease there. That's going to be the bottom. This portion here will become the right-hand side and this portion over here will become the top. I don't know how long any of them are, but once it's folded, it's going to look like this. And we have x on each side of our square. So let's see, this one going to be the left, this is going to be the bottom, here is going to be the right, and over here is going to fold over and become the top. And of course the total is 60 inches. So we could say x plus x plus x plus x gives us 60. Or we can use the multiplication because we see the repeated addition and say that the perimeter is equal to x times 4 or 4x. Well the perimeter we know is 60. So let's fill that value in where the p is. 60 is equal to 4x. And we learned how to solve this. The 4 and the x are being multiplied, so we will undo the multiplication by dividing both sides of the equation by 4. On the right-hand side of the equation, 4 divided by 4 gives us 1, leaves x all by itself. And on the left-hand side of the equation, 60 divided by 4 is 15. So for our answer, we know that the square measures 15 inches. 
on each side. This sort of answers the question they asked us. They actually asked us what are the dimensions of the duct opening, and usually dimensions are given as a length by a width. So we could say that the duct is 15 inches by 15 inches. And that would work fine also. All right, let's check out the next page. When you're reading a word problem, you might come across some common words and phrases that tell you th that a multiplication is happening. Product is sometimes there, it's rather formal, but sometimes you see it. Multiply is sometimes there, but other words like times, twice, double, triple, of. Of's an interesting one. We'll see that a lot when we start working with fractions or percentages. Uh, sometimes we have the phrase, each one has or gets a certain amount, and that also helps us to see that there's a repeated addition within the multiplication problem. And really that's our job. Our job is to recognize the repeated addition, not to memorize this table full of words. So here in our third example, let's slide this up a little bit, we have 37 cylinders of refrigerant in the storeroom, and each one of these contains 143 pounds of refrigerant. The question is how many pounds of refrigerant are in the storeroom? So the first thing we want to do is notice that this is a repeated addition situation. If we looked at the first cylinder, we would have 143 pounds. And then if we looked at the second cylinder, we'd have another 143 pounds. The third cylinder would contain 143 pounds. And to find the total, we'd have to start adding all these up until we got to the 37th cylinder. And that would be the 37th time we'd be adding 143. So here we are adding 143 37 times. And I certainly don't want to enter all of that into my calculator. So what we're going to do, of course, is multiply. Um, one thing that will help us as we start working more of these problems is to start seeing some patterns within the word equations. So if we created a word equation, it might look something like this the pounds in each cylinder, multiplied by the number of cylinders, is equal to the total pounds. And it's not a coincidence that we have these words here in each cylinder and the number of cylinders in this order. So looking back at our problem, we know that we have 143 pounds in each cylinder. We would like to multiply that by the 37. Hold on. There, clean that up a little bit. Multiply that by the 37 cylinders to find the total. And from here, of course, this is purely a calculator exercise. When we get done, we find that there are 5,291 what? Uh, pounds of refrigerant. In the storeroom, not 5,291 cylinders, but 5,291 pounds of refrigerant. All right, let's slide down to the next one. To prepare for his business's annual fall furnace checkup special, Jessup purchased 250 furnace filters at a total cost of $792.50. And we'd like to know what is the cost of each filter. Again, the first thing we want to do is recognize the repeated addition. The cost of one filter plus the cost of the other filter plus the cost of the next filter plus the cost of the next filter and all those costs are the same. We're just adding the same number over and over and over again. Like before, we're going to write that word equation. So we have the cost of each filter. Notice that these words of each are popping back up again. Multiplied by the number of filters in 
is equal to the total cost. And just like before, we have some common descriptors in the same place. All right, so the cost of each filter, well, we don't know that, so let's call it something. I'm going to call it capital F, but whenever you um, create a variable to stand for something, you should always remind yourself what it stands for. So F is the filter cost. Later on, we'll be working with problems that have more than one unknown, and it's really important to be able to keep our variables uh, separated from each other. We should be able to tell which one is which. So we've got the cost of each filter multiplied by the number of filters, which happen to be 250. And that gives us our total cost of 792 and 50 cents. All right, so now we look at this and we see that we have 250 being multiplied by F. We would like to undo that multiplication so that we get the F all by itself. So we'll divide the left-hand side by 250 and of course do the same thing to the right-hand side. Divide it by 250 also. The 250s, 250 divided by 250 makes 1, leaves F all by itself. And on the right-hand side, $792.50 divided by 250 leaves us with 3.17. Look back at what our variable is standing for. Look back at the words in the question. Notice that we're looking for a cost. The filters cost $3.17 and of course that's for each one. All right, let's find our next example. Slide down here. I guess you all will be flipping the page. Over the last 10 years, the number of customers patronizing Kelly's business have tripled. Currently, the business has 543 customers. How many customers did the business have 10 years ago? And our keyword here is tripled. And tripled means we're going to multiply by three. So something happened to multiply by three. Whenever you're looking at tripled or double or words like half or a third, things like that, the real question is to ask yourself, which value should be larger? And this will help keep you from putting the wrong number in the wrong spot. So really what's happening is that the customers 10 years ago is the smaller number and this is being multiplied by 3 to give us the customers now. Alright, so let's see. Um, customers 10 years ago. I don't know what that is. We should call it something like X. So we have X. Now you can see why we don't want to use this multiplication symbol so often because it gets confused with an X all the time. So this X is being multiplied by 3. So I'm going to use some parentheses to give us the customers now, which is 543. So we look at the left side of the equation. We see that x is being multiplied by 3. We'd like to undo the multiplication, so we divide by 3. And of course, what we do to one side, we do to the other. 3 divided by 3 is just 1, leaving x all by itself. 543 divided by 3 is 181. So 10 years ago, the business had 181 customers. And then we give ourselves a quick check. 181 customers, does it feel like if we tripled that we'd have 543? That sounds pretty good. All right, let's move on to division. Multiplication was talking about repeated addition. Division uses repeated subtraction just like you'd think, but the subtraction happens over and over again until your amount is all gone. So when you say 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5, what that means is if you start off with 20 and then subtract 4 or 5 times, your 20 is all gone and you have nothing left. So we can think about the repeated subtraction that's happening in a division until the original quantity gets used up. The other thing we can think about for division is this idea of separating an amount into some equally sized pieces. 
The other reason that 20 divided by 4 is 5 is because these 20 things can be separated into four groups. Right? Group number 1, group number 2, group number 3, and group number 4. And of course each group contains five things. So just like before with multiplication, we have some common words that tend to indicate division. Uh, certainly we can tell people to divide. We can use the official word for division, which is quotient. But otherwise, sometimes people talk about six going into 30, half of something, third of, a third of something, uh, things being shared equally, how many in each. And like before, the real job is not to memorize this table, it's to think about the creation of these equally sized pieces, or to feel that repeated subtraction that's happening until a quantity is all used up. So let's come down and just check out an example here. Half of this year's maintenance calls were for air conditioning repairs. There were 75 calls for air conditioning repairs. How many maintenance calls did the company receive? So now we've got the word half, and half indicates something is being divided by two. And like before, we want to be real careful to analyze the situation and figure out which quantity should be larger than the other. So the um, air conditioning repairs are part of all of the maintenance calls. So the maintenance calls should be the larger amount. So if we talk about the maintenance calls as the larger amount, when we divide that larger amount by two, we should end up with the calls for air conditioning repairs. All right, let's see. Uh, what do we know? Um, well, I know that the air conditioning repairs, there were 75 of those. But I don't know how many maintenance calls there were. So let's use a variable for that. So M is equal to the number of maintenance calls. So we have M divided by 2 is equal to 75. On the left-hand side, we have some division. We'll undo that division by multiplying both sides of our equation by 2. Right, what we do on the left, we must also do on the right. Of course, 2 divided by 2 is just 1, and that leaves us with m all by itself. And of course, 2 times 75 is 150. So the company received 150. Look back, m stands for maintenance calls. Let's slide on down to our next example. We have five partners. They run a company and share the profits equally. This year, the profits were $324,000. And the question is, how much did each person earn? Hmm. Well, we have this idea of sharing stuff equally. So we know that we are dividing the profits up. Everybody gets a certain amount. We're subtracting over and over again until the profits are all gone. So these profits. divided by the number of partners should give us each partner's share. And let's see, let's fill in what we know. Um, the profits are $324,000. The number of partners was five. And each person's share, I don't know what that is, so we will call it x. So x stands for each partner's share. This one doesn't take a lot of work. We just need to divide. And we find out that, and so x becomes 64,800. So each partner received $64,800. And of course, the key thing here is to recognize that we started off with these $324,000 in profits and subtracted off $64,800 for the first partner, 
64,800 for the second partner, and so on until everything was all gone. So we had this repeated subtraction until an amount was used up. For the rest of our class this semester, we're going to be seeing a lot of the word per. And the word per implies a very specific division. Whatever is before the word per is always being divided by whatever comes after the word per. So for example, you have probably talked a lot about miles per gallon. Right, the fuel economy of your car, especially with the prices of gas these days. So when you talk about miles per gallon, what you're doing is calculating the number of miles divided by the total gallons that you used. So it's a very physical sense of miles per where the fraction bar is, gallons sitting down in the denominator. In the last problem that we had, we could have said, well, let's see what we did. We said uh, profits. And then we divided by the number of partners. So we could say that this is how much profit per partner. Numerator, numerator units, the division talks about per and then denominator units. All right, so let's try one here. Natural gas produces 1,050 BTUs per cubic foot. A building uses 769,860 BTUs of heat, and I believe that's per day. How many cubic feet of natural gas are being burned? So the first thing we want to do is focus in on the units here of BTUs per cubic foot. And we know that when we say BTU per cubic foot, that's a value that's calculated by looking at the number of BTUs divided by the number of cubic feet. So our word equation really is handed to us as long as we pay careful attention to where the word per is located. All right, well, let's see. We need to know how many cubic feet of natural gas are burned. So let's call that C. C will be the cubic feet of natural gas. All right, so natural gas produces 1,050 BTUs per cubic foot. That belongs there. Equal stays right in place. The building uses 769,860 BTUs. So that's in our numerator because that's where the BTUs were in our word equation. Divided by the cubic feet of natural gas, which we don't know. That's called C. So everything gets put exactly in its place. We don't want to divide the wrong way because we know that division is not commutative. It matters which direction you divide. Okay, so let's see. Um, yeah, on the right hand side, we are dividing by C. So we need to undo the division by C. And of course, the way to do this is to multiply both sides of our equation by C. So we're going to multiply on the right-hand side by C, and we'll multiply on the left-hand side by C. And of course, C divided by C is equal to 1, so there's a great big 1 there. And we are left with 769,860 on the right-hand side. And the left-hand side, we have C times 1,050. We've seen this happen before. It looks like we didn't do much, but we did. On the left hand side, now we have two things being multiplied. We know how to undo that multiplication. We want to divide. We want to divide so that C is left all alone. So we'll divide by 1050. Of course, what we do to the left hand side, we need to do to the right hand side. 
1050 divided by 1050 is 1. 1 C is left all by itself. And on the right hand side, we grab our calculator and do the division. 769,860 divided by 1050 comes up to be 733.2. 733.2 what? Well, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to scroll a little bit. What do we know? The building. Burned. 733.2. 0.2 cubic feet, because those are the units on C, of natural gas. So there you go. When you see the word per, the units before the word per describe the numerator, the units after the word per describe the denominator. And good luck with your homework, and we'll be talking. Bye-bye.